We're going to get into our Bears mailbag in just a second. And hey, you want to be a part of our live mailbag? Subscribe and join us on Tuesdays when we go live at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central. Turn on that notification bell too after you subscribe. Once you hit that sub button, this bell should pop up. All you got to do is turn it on, select all, and uh, you get notified on your phone every single time we drop a video, just like when we go live on YouTube. We'll start today's mailbag with a couple of super chats. Appreciate you, Jason, for the five bucks. Odds that Jenkins starts left tackle this year. Go Bears, P.S., praying a Rodgers not playing for Green Bay this year. Hey, I mean, aren't we all hoping Aaron Rodgers is playing elsewhere? Uh, I, think, uh, I think we're in agreement there. Uh, producer Sam uh, is hoping he's playing in Denver. We'll see if that ends up happening. But... Uh, I, look, I think he's going to start there unless they go sign someone. They tried to sign Morgan Moses to play left tackle. He wanted to play right tackle, so he opted to sign with the Jets. Uh, appreciate the question, but uh, we will end up seeing uh, how he plays at left tackle and if he plays there long term. Don Burr, Dan Campbell, best coach in the North. Come on, Don. We appreciate the Supers. Bears fans, you got to sound out Don Burr here. Daniel Montoya, would Bears have signed Andy Dalton? if they knew they would get Justin Fields in the draft? Probably not, but you can't go back in time, which is why, since they did sign Andy Dalton for like 10 million bucks, trying to get rid of Foles makes more sense. So it's a good question, but it doesn't work that way. You can't void his contract uh, after the fact, so it just is what it is. Dalton's going to be your short-term starter. Once Fields is ready, he'll slide in, and Dalton will be your backup this year. We'll see if he's your long-term backup. He'll probably look to sign elsewhere and be a starter again because that's why he chose the Bears so he could start, but obviously drafting Justin Fields got in the way of that for Andy Dalton. Adam White, most likely team the Bears will upset and most likely team to upset the Bears. Um, Gosh, I wish we had the schedule up. Uh, I'll pull it up here. How about uh, how about splitting with the Packers? I think that's something uh, you could look at. And I'm just pulling up the schedule on the fly. You got the Bills week two. That's going to be tough, especially if Dalton. That's the preseason, by the way. Um, let's see here. How about the Browns in week three? You beat the Browns on the road. That could be a good win. Bucks again on Christmas or on October 24th. I thought it said December 24th, October 24th. That could be fun. Most likely team to upset the Bears. You know what I think a trap game is? I think uh, the Bengals in week two are a big trap game. And if Dalton's still starting that week and he loses at home to Cincinnati, don't be surprised if the Bears make a change in week three. Ari Bronze, name a free agent that you still want Chicago to sign if he's cheap. Like the question, Ari. Uh, Steven Nelson's a guy that uh, continues to come to mind. He's still out there. Don't think he's going to cost a lot at this point. I actually think he's probably a tick better than Richard Sherman at this point, who is also available in free agency. Uh, I like Nelson. I think he'd be better than Desmond Trufant. You could uh, have him be your CB2. Uh, Jalen Johnson's your CB1. And then, you know, Vildor and all these, you know, uh, Thomas Graham, all these other guys, Duke Shelley can compete to be that starting nickel. But uh, Steven Nelson is the guy I'm still interested in. But uh, as of now, he remains unsigned. Name a free agent you still want the Bears to sign this offseason. There's still time. The uh, season's still a couple of months away. So let us know who you would like to see Chicago sign in free agency. Jules asks, overall, the Bears, uh, are they improved or worse in this offseason? Rookies sound promising, but the loss of players like Fuller are big losses. Yeah, look, Kyle Fuller's a big loss. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt. Desmond Trufant does not replace him. Uh, Jalen Johnson, I think, is ready to be CB1. He's really good. Uh, if CB2, if someone can emerge, whether it's Trufant, Vildor, or someone else, uh, I think you can be okay there, but you'll probably be a tick worse at corner. Um, does Robert Quinn play better this year? If he does, then obviously that's a big boost. And then really after that, Jules, it comes down to the quarterback. If your quarterback play is better, this will be a better team. If it's worse or if it's about the same, it'll probably be a slightly worse team because the schedule's tougher this year. So a lot of it really comes down to the quarterbacks, whether that's uh, uh, Dalton for most of the year, Fields for most of the year, or a combination of both. Rascals Hobbies, can the Bears just let Foles go without a trade and save cap? Nope. You cut him, his dead cap hit doubles. I think his cap hit is currently like $6.7 million. If you cut him, it jumps up to $14. Uh, if you trade him, you save $4 million in dead cap money. It's a weird contract the way it's structured out, uh, but that is the way it works. So you're not going to save money if you cut him. So 
Uh, you can book this right now. If Nick Foles does not get traded, he will be on the 53-man roster. So uh, that's another reason why you want to trade him, because if uh, you can trade him, that frees up a roster spot for someone else. If they trade him, hey, we'll cover it here on uh, Chicago Bears Now. You see that link below, youtube.com slash bears now. We cover breaking news, rumors. We go live uh, every single week on Tuesdays here on Chicago Bears Now. Don't miss any of our coverage because, hey, we are covering the Bears better than anyone here on YouTube. One more time, the link is youtube.com slash bears now. Scott Osborne, who has a better season? Robert Quinn, Eddie Jackson, Javon Wims, or Tariq Cohen? Uh, one of those does not belong. I'll let you guys decide who that is. Uh, his name rhymes with LaVon Dems. Uh, Javon Wims is not going to have the best season out of those four. I don't think he makes this football team. Um, I'll go Eddie Jackson. I think he has a huge year this year. New number? Pff, come on, book it. He's going to have a great season. Eddie Jackson, I think, will have a, uh, a really solid season in 2021. Lucas praying, is Robert Quinn a lost cause, or do you believe he can bounce back? He's not a lost cause because we saw a couple of years ago with the Cowboys, uh, he had kind of had three or four just average years in a row, and then he goes out next to a dominant pass rusher like Demarcus Lawrence, Khalil Mack, similar situation, and has 11 and a half sacks. It's possible. I think the foot issue was worse than we thought last year. Now, <laughs> $70 million giving you two sacks, that's just, you know, that's not going to cut it, but... I think he can give you five and a half or six. Like, and if you honestly, based on what we saw last year, if you got six sacks out of Robert Quinn, you're never going to get what you paid for with that contract. But I think you would live with that number. I think if he gave you six sacks, you would be pretty happy with that overall. Uh, and you would get that sack total up as a team as well because Bears are middle of the pack in total sacks because Quinn just didn't do his part. Cameras were on. Our camera's on today. Who do you think at the most trade value, uh, not like I want to trade anymore, but Foles, I was just wondering, who do you think has the most trade value? Does he mean between Dalton and Foles? If that's what he means, then <sighs> probably Dalton, I guess, but neither of them have a lot. Most tra trade value off for any player on the team? Uh I mean, it's probably either Khalil Mack or Justin Fields, the guy you just drafted, and you're not going to trade those guys. So there you go. Funkbringer, how many touchdowns will Justin throw to Allen Robinson this season? Hopefully a bunch. Um, without knowing when he's going to play, without knowing how the offense is going to look, how about four? Four touchdowns to Allen Robinson? I mean, A-Rob, as good as he is, he's never been a huge high-volume touchdown guy. Seven and six the past two years. Now, I think with better quarterback play, that can go up. But let's say Fields takes over week five, plays 12 games. You know, a touchdown every three weeks, maybe four or five touchdowns to him. Hopefully more, but uh, somewhere in that range. Edward Guzman, do you think the Bears can go 10 and 7? Well, how about you guys decide? And by the way, if you want to go check out my game-by-game -game record predictions video, it's on the channel, youtube.com uh, slash bears now. You guys can go find it right there. Uh, I think I said either 9-8 and eight or 10-7. and seven. Can't remember off the top of my head. A lot of it depends on what happens with Aaron Rodgers. If he's in this division, that's two games that you're not going to be favored in. If he's out, you might be favored both games against the Packers. So let us know how many wins will the Bears have this upcoming season. Joel Fernandez, will Danny Trevathan have a bounce back season with Sean Desai? So recently, uh, Trevathan was quoted saying, the swagger, the energy is back with new defensive coordinator Sean Desai. I think there's a lot of excitement uh, among the players because uh, not that Chuck Pagano was a bad coach, but he had gotten a little older. He had gotten stale. Uh, I think they needed some fresh, young energy, which is what Desai will provide. And I think a Trevathan bounce back is fairly probable. I thought the second half of last year, he sneakily played really well. First half of the year, he looked slow. He looked out of shape and did not play well at all. Second half, though, him and Roquan were flying around. So I actually think uh, Trevathan can carry that over. We have a more normal offseason this year because uh, the COVID protocols aren't as uh, uh, stingy, obviously. So uh, I think that uh, he will play better in 2021. Tamber the Lamber says, bold prediction, Marquise Goodwin wins the wide receiver three spot. I think that's mildly bold. I don't think that's crazy to think, right? I think it's up for grabs, which means Goodwin winning it could happen. I mean, you look at the depth chart, which I believe – uh, we have available for you guys. Obviously, Allen Robinson and uh, Darnell Mooney are locked in as your top two guys, but 
I've got Anthony Miller as your slot wide receiver three, but I think Goodwin's going to push him. I think Demir Bird's in the mix. And I think Daz Newsom, if he gets fully healthy from that collarbone injury and has a strong camp, I think he'll be fighting for snaps as well. So uh, there's a lot of bodies. I didn't even mention Riley Ridley and Javon Wims. How much they factor in, we'll see. But uh, don't think it's actually that bold, Tamber. I think that's very much a possibility. Zach Suleiman, how many yards do you think uh, David Montgomery will rush for this season? You know, he was about 1070 last year, I believe, 1070. Um, how about 1150? I don't think – I think the efficiency will go up, but I think with the additions of – uh, Damian Williams and Tariq Cohen coming back healthy, and maybe even Khalil Herbert, the rookie out of Virginia Tech, you will see Montgomery get less carries. I don't think he'll be pushing 250 carries. 225, somewhere in that range. Uh, continue to give him touches in the passing game as well, but if you're thinking about giving him a second contract, you don't want to just run him into the ground. So we'll see what happens there. How about 1,150 yards for David Montgomery rushing? 